Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. It's October 2020. Only one quarter remains for this dumpster fire of a year, and then we can get the hell on out of here. And what's the future going to look like? What is it going to look like? So frequently, we all focus on the short term, what's happening today with the price of XRP. And fair enough, it's fun to look at that. We've got skin in the game. It's worth being aware of that. But do we really think that these little daily uh, bops around in terms of price action are going to be really, truly significant a decade from now? Probably not. What do you think the whole landscape is going to look like in 10 years? What do you think uh, Ripple's going to be doing? How big will that company be? How many corridors for on-demand liquidity will there be? What will the price of XRP be? Well, I want to share with you a number of thoughts on this, and there are a couple pieces that are worth running through, because frankly, Ripple's positioning themselves in such a way that, uh, my God, talk about standards being in place. It's not purely about Ripple. It's not only about Ripple. It's about ISO standards, which basically are, are just, they're, they're ISO codes, which I'll be talking about in this video briefly at least, but it's, it's really just about um, codes for industry standards. And in this case, we're talking about the way the, the money's flowing around the planet. And Ripple's making sure that they're positioned for that. But in addition to that, so I, I think ultimately everybody's going to be on board with these ISO codes because otherwise you're going to be left in the dust. But beyond that, there's still the only company on the planet that has a solution for the train wreck that is the world of global cross-border payments in terms of settlement. What do you think that's going to do a decade out? for XRP price action. Well, before we go any further, if you would please delicately tap that like button, I would definitely appreciate the support. And I also recommend that you get down with your bad self by subscribing to the Moon Lambo channel, which is the Moon lambo of all channels on the YouTubes. All right, let's dig in here now. So this piece came from You Today, a crypto media outlet titled, RippleNet is well prepared for 2030. Uh, Ripple's Ashish Birla uh, says, here's why it's important. Ashish Birla, senior vice president of product at Ripple, has taken to Twitter to comment on a Coindesk article about the ISO 20022 standard to transform the payments industry within the coming 10 years. Uh, Burla stated that RippleNet is already compliant with ISO 20022, so the blockchain giant, blockchain giant is well prepared for the coming changes. And here's the actual tweet, verbatim. From Ashish Birla, RippleNet is already ISO 20022 compliant, making us well prepared for 2030. So they're certainly planning on being here uh, for uh, for the next decade. Now, other entities, as you'll see as I go through this this uh, video and, and highlight some of the content here, some of the articles, it's, it's pretty clear that it's going to be a slow rollout for some of this. But ultimately, uniformity will benefit Ripple probably in a greater capacity than other fintechs because, again, uh, there, it's it's going to improve from my perspective the messaging portion, which is pretty much all everybody everybody's trying to fix anyway, other than Ripple. But in addition to that, again, Ripple the only entity trying to solve the settlement portion of this. Nobody else has a remotely reasonable solution. You know, even um, um, what's RTGS. You know, and I'm not going to get into them deeply in this video. I'm just going to mention them here. Even they claiming to uh, eliminate Nostra Vostra accounts. That is that is a sleight of hand, my friends, because their theory, and I don't even know if this is actually going to work. I'd be astonished. Maybe they can magically pull it off, but they're talking about having central banks uh, be the Nostra Vostra accounts. Don't know why they'd want to take that role from businesses the, the world over or if you can even ensure sufficient interoperability. But even then, you're talking about central banks uh, being the, the pools of liquidity. So still, you'd have to have that uh, you know that liquidity held somewhere. And so it's like Nostra Vostra accounts for central banks. That's effectively what it is. And so there is no other solution other than Rip, Ripple. what Ripple proposes, which is basically just tap into the fact that cryptocurrency exchanges exist, because this is it in a nutshell. Tap into the fact that cryptocurrency exchanges exist and are pools of liquidity because people are buying and selling there, and then use that, use them as a hub to move uh, currencies from, you know, across the planet from one fiat currency to a different fiat currency. Because again, that's already happening. There are businesses that are doing that because it's their business to make money on the buying and selling of cryptocurrencies. That simple. So it's going to happen regardless. It's more like, since this is happening, why don't we just tap into that? With every other proposed model, it's the case that you have to have dormant capital not getting used for anything. It's not part of any sort of additional business model, right? And so it just doesn't make as much sense here. But uh, here's the piece from Cointelegraph. 
uh, I'm not Coin Telegraph, CoinDesk, titled "The Standard About to Revolutionize Payments." And this was interesting because a lot of the times when you're talking about the revolution of this or that having to do with payments, uh, it's, well, it's usually not friendly to Ripple and XRP, and not that that's explicitly what's being discussed here. But even then, it's typically Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. Uh, you know, it's gonna change the way money moves around the planet. When really Bitcoin, it's just it's either a store of value or it's nothing at this point, right? Unless unless some sort of layer two technology comes along and fixes uh, the you know the, the the technical limitations, if I'm being polite, about Bitcoin, which in, it could happen. Maybe somehow Lightning Network magically starts working and gets adopted. Okay, maybe we we shall see. But to end of this piece now. A revolution in finance and payments. That's what crypto-based platforms like Bitcoin, decentralized finance, and stablecoins are attempting to do. Yeah, Bitcoin's failing there, okay? <laughs> Clearly, it's already failed. It's, it's, it's over unless Layer 2 magically comes along, like I said. But uh, just because traditional money is centralized around monolithic central banks doesn't mean that it can't have a revolution of its own. Now, that is true. Starting to sound like an adult here. Um... Over the next 10 years, a big bang will be unfolding in central bank land. ISO 20022, and that's what uh, Shish Burler was just talking about. A new standard for communicating electronic payments instructions between financial institutions will be taking over. This combined with the emergence of real-time central bank retail payment systems means that Payments in 2030 are going to be much better than in 2020, right? And so again, we're talking about the messaging portion. This is what it, this is what's going to be affected here. And so again, all other things being equal, uh, this is great. Like, who's it going to help the most? Again, if you've got a bunch of different fintechs that are uh, really just glorified messaging s services anyway, if that's all that they are, uh, and this levels the playing field in that sense, who's going to benefit the most? Well, I would, I, I would, uh, <laughs> I would uh, suppose that. The company that has a solution for the settlement portion, the only one in the world that has a solution for the settlement portion, Ripple, uh, would, would stand to benefit greater because if everybody else, if the rest of it's level, that means that there's no chance. If, if it's truly level, Ripple will not be um, you know, at some sort of disadvantage with the messaging at that point, but it's at a clear advantage in terms of the settlement portion. That's why this matters here. And so let me go down a little bit further because there are only a few parts. Of this. It's a really long piece, great piece. If you have time, I encourage you to read it. But um, it's so long that I, there are only a couple parts I actually wanted to dig through here. Um, I think it was down here. Yeah, it's down further. One second. I almost got it here. Remember, it's re There we go. Okay, here we go. Thanks for bearing with me. All right, probably the most important piece of financial infrastructure to make the shift will be, and I love this, oh my God, we're about to, I, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna remember what SWIFT stands for. Like I've been at this almost three years and I still don't remember to be honest with you, but here it is. And every time I read this, I crack up because it sounds so freaking old timey. Oh my gosh. So anyway, uh, the most important piece of financial infrastructure to make the shift will be the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, could you send over what that means via facsimile? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> just sounds so, it can't be just me that thinks that. That sounds so old-timey and stupid. Uh, and it's also hilarious that it's it stands for SWIFT, and they are anything but. That is, it's like the most ironic business name on the freaking planet. But anyway, SWIFT operates the global messaging network that banks rely on for making international payments. It tends to begin the switch to ISO 20022 near the end of 2022. So Ripple's already there. Swift will be there in a couple years. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there will be a three-year coexistence period in which uh, ISO 20022 and Swift's legacy MT messaging formats can both be used. Only in November of 2025, the legacy format will be turned off. So they got five years of this. Right. And, and, and then and again, so even if it takes a while, at some point, the, you know, the, the playing field, it's going to be sufficiently leveled on the messaging side. And some of those in entities out there are going to be better than others. I, I fully understand that as well. I'm just talking about in terms of opportunity, if if uh, if the vast majority or all of fintechs are utilizing the same standards there. And again, like I keep saying, still got nothing for settlements, <laughs> which to me is the coolest thing in the world. And so what is that going to ultimately look like? in terms of price action for XRP. Well, look, as long as corridors keep getting built out, it, it is uh, it is 
my belief, and again, that, I want to be clear, like I don't have a financial background. It's not financial advice. Don't buy or sell because of me. Uh, it's, it's certainly my belief that as long as XRP continues to get rolled out uh, like in, in, uh, as a bridge currency that, for that use case, so as long as on-demand liquidity uh, corridors continue to open up, it's, it's, it's my, my belief that XRP will, as a result of that, indirectly uh, increase in price. Because we will see that there's a business model here that actually needs XRP that will make it more likely that people are going to feel secure investing if they want to diversify into crypto, the world of crypto. It'll make them feel more secure investing in something that they know businesses must use in order to conduct this particular business model. So if you're an institutional investor, increasingly it's going to look like a no-brainer. It's less certain today. But as more corridors open, if you are an institutional investor, and what if XRP really does become the standard, and you want to diversify, it's going to be a much easier decision at that point. And so certainly, admittedly, it's a little bit riskier now, but there's an opportunity for asymmetrical returns as a result. So that's a trade-off I'm willing to take person on a personal level. You've got to decide for yourself if whether or not you want to buy or sell or hold, not have a part of this, whatever you want. For me, it makes a lot of sense. I'm willing to take the risk. I saw what happened in terms of XRP price action going from 20 something cents to almost $4 on speculation alone. I think that once utility increasingly matters, or as it can increasingly matters, you're going to see, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't pretend to, and I don't make price predictions, but I think you're going to find that XRP will be worth substantially more than it is today. But again, it comes down to real world utility, which is why my investment thesis is that utility matters and will win the day. But I will leave it there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.